We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Listen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Thursday or Friday, wherever this episode is coming out. It's coming out. Ponce is doing Friday. an amazing job with those clean cuts. Keep him on. Oh man, the new clean cuts are a fire. Are fire. But anyways, they're good. They're good. Happy hump day. We had a little bit. I had a little bit of a short night. Uh, all my my two kids decided to just be up all night after spending a whole day with you and Madison. So I don't know what you guys fed him. It was sugar. 24 no, seven. So, no, I mean, but great, uh, I spent great. the whole night up to doing work because I couldn't do work during the day, taking care of your kids. I know. Uh, <laughs> super grateful for that. But anyways, today we have an incredible guest that we've connected from another content is profit MVP guest. So I'm excited. You know, those are good surprises. And, uh, and I love the topic that we're going to be talking about because it's the first time that we're actually going to bring this to the show. So anyways, that's what I was going to say. It's actually, uh, First I've time. only heard about this topic from one other company and they like barely mention it, but I was like, wow, that sounds really interesting. I think it could be a very powerful thing. So yeah. I'm excited that we have today's guest juicy, to, juicy to after... dive in. She is the expert on this. So yeah. I'm excited. 414 episodes. And this is the first time we talk about this. Don't want to miss it. That's Anyways. crazy. That's yeah. Yes. That's impressive. All right. Here we go. We've got some friends. Hey, New I'm Luis. Talent. And this is Luis. And welcome to the Content is Profit before. podcast. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a good time. Like all this podcast is simple entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. Woo. That is correct. Fonzie, what are we talking about today? I just want to add before we talk about that, we need to add visionaries in our intro. After the last conversation <laughs> with Justin, we need to add visionaries to that I intro. I know. If you're a visionary and you're listening to the show, send us a DM. Let us know. Hey, I'm a visionary. I want to be included in that intro. Yeah, we'll help you share <laughs> and spread the word of your mission with the world. Now, what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about how to turn employees into your brand evangelist with ooh, internal ooh, marketing. Oh, baby. I, I love. Know. I think this topic is reserves hashtag juicy juicy. And if you're enjoying <laughs> this episode, go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and connect with us on social media at Biz Bros Co. That is right. If today's guest help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode because you can be doing the same thing for somebody else. And, and, don't forget to leave a five-star review. Let's go. <laughs> it always kills me. Your uh, your double and. The double and, and, and is it's like a trademark at this point. I know. You, you, we need a shirt that says and, 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 dot, and. dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, today we're actually meeting with an amazing podcaster that has secret sauce we never talked about. We connected through another Content is Profit MVP, Holly Shannon, stoked to explore the concepts and unlock goodness for your company. Our guest has countless experience in the corporate world and decided to follow one of her passions and start publishing early in 2021. This allowed her to connect her passion with incredible people. She currently operates from the beautiful Caribbean. Ooh. Her show, The Internal Marketing Podcast, helps thousands of people create incredible evangelists inside of companies. That is right. Please welcome the incredible podcast host, the Caribbean queen, head internal marketing evangelist, Carrie Ann Simpson. Simpson. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, guys. I just love your energy, right? Can I just pause to say I love your energy. It's amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you for the compliment. You know, we just are here Caribbean queen. We're like, we need to bring the flavor. With, you know? Yeah. You know, and I need to add that to my resume now. Caribbean queen. I love it. That is right. That's, I mean, technically, we're from the Caribbean too, Venezuela, right? So yeah. I, feel, I feel like today... It feels like home in yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. It's that is right. I mean, this interest can either go really well, like just happen, <laughs> or like really wrong. Be like, how dare you call me that? Uh, but, anyways, I don't think we've ever had that. But uh, we connected a few weeks back and I was so, so intrigued and I was so grateful for that conversation too. And we're like, my gosh, like we need to bring this topic in here, right? Because yeah. uh, you've been talking about it and you're publishing your podcast for quite a while. And, um, you know, to market to your own teams, 
right? It's like, what? Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the companies, right, their efforts is to, you know, how do I acquire these customers and how do we put that message out there? But then we look back and or inside of our companies and there might be some things that we can do in there, right, to our employees. So I want to I wanna start the conversation, like, how do you end up talking about that and being so passionate about that specific topic? Wow. Well, I'm going to keep that long story as short as possible. But, you know, um, after I've been a marketer for over 20 years, right? Yeah. And I'd reached a stage in my career where I said, you know, there's so much that I've learned along my journey. I want to give back to the business community, the marketing community. And I said, you know, what's the conversation that's not happening enough that marketers can start to be a part of and businesses can be a part of to think about how they yeah. can better build their brands and drive growth in a more effective and cost efficient way, right? We can't yeah. forget that budget. And, you know, I started to have conversations with different folks. And I realized that as marketers, we have a blind spot. And that blind spot is actually right inside our very own companies, you know, so we always take the opportunity to reach out to our customers and make sure that they understand how great we are and why they need to buy from us. And we forget that it's the employees in the company who are the ones that de deliver on that awesome brand promise to the customer. But yet we don't spend enough time and energy, the same energy that we fo use to focus on our customers, we don't spend that on our employees. And then when the customers mm. come in, they're like, hmm, something's, something's not right here. How, you, you're not as awesome as you told me that you were. The experience is not as great as I thought it would have been. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm like, hmm, that's a huge disconnect. And so I said, I started to do some more research and came across the concept internal marketing. There have been a few books mm written about it. And when I started to Google online, you're right, you're not the only show. I mean, it, 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 you realize that internal marketing is just the kind of conversation that's not happening enough. Mm -hmm. And here's a great untapped opportunity. And I said, hey, I love to have pot, I love to produce podcasts just like you guys. And I said, let's do the internal marketing podcast. And I hadn't seen a podcast like it. And I said, let's jump yeah. right in. Let's have the conversation. And it's been an awesome journey ever since. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. This, I'm, I'm going to the idea world right now. I love, you know, ideas and all that stuff. You said on top opportunity, and you were talking about how you obviously tapped that opportunity with your podcast, right? Talking about that. But now I'm thinking an on top opportunity could be to sell production for in podcasts for internal marketing within companies, right? Find big corporations and say, hey, look, we can increase your brand advocacy, right? The how long they stay, all these things, uh, yep. re, you know, retaining your talent all through an internal podcast. I think that a is absolutely. actually a, a good idea. Have, have you, well, I, all right. There's so many questions I have. So <laughs> why would somebody, first of all, right? Like maybe who is this for? Who's internal marketing for? Like what size companies? When do they need to start considering, right? Marketing to their employees because I'm sure maybe, let's say, a smaller company, the owner might be just, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, they might be telling themselves, I don't have time. How am I? I barely have time to market my own business. How am I going to market <laughs> to my employees? That's right. And that's a great question. So first of all, I like to tell everybody, whether you have an employee of one or an employee of 10,000, you need to be doing internal marketing. And the reason why that is, is that before you even get your very first customer, it's your employee who is there first. And if they're not bought into the mission, the vision, the purpose of why you exist as a company, if they don't understand what's great about your value proposition, your products, your services, that they need to be the ones who are excited about the delivering that to your very first customer, then you got a problem. So every business of every size needs to have internal marketing. And, mm. you know, it, it really is not as expensive as one would think, you know, um, yeah. yes, it, you know, external marketing is expensive. And yes, you can make internal marketing as expensive as you want to make it. But it really starts with those kinds of internal conversations with yeah. your team members, letting them know why you exist as a business, making sure they understand the mission, vision, the purpose, uh, making sure the culture of your company is something that really makes them feel good about being part of your business. And having done that, then what you're doing is you're setting the awesome groundwork for having a team that's super excited about being part of your brand and delivering on that promise to the customer. 
Yeah. Mm. I like that. I, I, I'm looking back at our own business. And I'm like, 100% <laughs> we can do a way better job yeah. at, at what we're doing. I think we we have a really solid team. We love them. I think they're definitely on board. But I think, and, and yeah. we actually have uh, a meeting every single week where we go over the core values of the companies, you know, kind of like the bigger vision. But I feel like we need to iterate more with them on why is it that we're doing what we're doing? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think, you know, go, same thing going back when we first began, right? Like when we we're trying to, I guess I'll say selling in them on the idea that we were going to go execute, right? Selling uh, ourselves too, inter internal marketing, yeah. like and introspective marketing. I remember <laughs> uh, a conversation that we had with our video editor, right? Uh, with Danny and he was like, I can't. I can't believe I'm talking to a beast bros. And we're like, wait, what? And it was like the first time that on that external side, because he came from an outside contractor that, and then he became internal team. And it was interesting, right? Because most people in our team touch our content. They consume what we say, these conversations, right? They'll, they'll see them. So in a sense, I think on that side, that could be covered. But like Fonzie said, yes, there might be some things that we can do proactively to continue, right? To do this, right? Because, you know, we've been through ups and downs and very big downs, right? And ups again. And it's been insane, right? And, and we, we love and adore each one of them. But I can imagine, right, as you continue to grow, right, and you have more and more people that you might not interact with on a daily basis, right? If you're a bigger company, how do you do that? And I, one, of our, one of the people that we help and the companies that we help, they're going through something like that right now with the type of product where, you know, you have the sales team and they set an expectation of the product, of the experience. And then on the delivery side, that not that might not be meeting those expectations and the CEO might be a little bit disconnected to that. And that is a problem, right? So then, you know, this causes like a ripple effect across all the company where questions starts to happen, you lose clients, like what's happening, right? So I think the, the consequence of not doing something like this and be proactive about it is massive for bigger companies. So I'm curious here, what are some of the... What are some of the good success stories that you've seen, right? Like what, what are some applications mm -hmm. that you've seen across internal marketing, different yeah. companies that you might help and consult and bring people into your podcast? What are some of the things and examples that we can go through? You read my mind. I was going to ask the same exact thing. It's like, it's like <laughs> we're brothers. <just> saying. <laughs> sure. Well, yes. And, and, and you're right. On my podcast, I've had the opportunity to speak to a couple of great companies and I call them case stories, right? Which mm. is companies who are doing internal marketing very well. And I actually just released an episode a few weeks ago with Christina Garnett of HubSpot because HubSpot is one of those great companies that not only mm -hmm. do they have an awesome brand, they have an awesome brand community externally. But what you realize is that that brand community is really an extension of their internal community and they see their employees as part of that community. And when you speak to yeah. someone like Christina, who is community marketing is part of her portfolio, speaking to her, mm -hmm. you realize that the culture of the company is really, really very important in that whole internal marketing framework, because you can yeah. do the internal podcasts, the internal newsletters and blogs and town hall meetings and Kumbaya type conversations, <laughs> but if the culture and if the leadership uh, is not driving yeah. a mindset of uh, gratitude, of partnership, of respect, yeah. of care, of just really treating people as people, then you, you've set yourself up uh, for, for, for a poor ending. So a company like HubSpot mm -hmm. has really been great. And, and there's another company yeah. that I looked at uh, called... Um, Huddle, where Huddle is, is there, they, they really focus on how do we empower team members to become ambassadors of the brand, right? Yeah. So they set up frameworks internally where they keep their employees informed about whatever their messaging is and their marketing activities are externally. Uh, but what they do is through that, they empower their team members to share those stories externally. And whatever yeah. is shared externally by employees who have their own personal brands, then they share that back internally. So they would have employees who have their own podcast, who have their own blogs, or would have appeared on a podcast quite like this one. They share those stories internally and allow the team members to cheer each other on. So there are just a couple of great examples of companies who are one, focused on building a great culture, and two, using that as a platform to empower their team members to build their own personal brands externally and celebrating that internally. Ah, and so the company good. brand gets to go along for the ride. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I think 
my mind goes back to when we started Biz Bros. And one of the things I remember talking to you about was, was that empowering the people that would come to our business to if they had an idea, if they wanted to try something, it's like, hey, go ahead, right? Like, we want to support you on that, right? And and try it. And hopefully, if it takes off, right, we can maybe all be part of it. Who knows, right? And uh, now looking back at it, I'm like, I feel like we need to do a, a better job uh, at that type of empowerment, right? And at the beginning of the conversation, I was talking about only one other company that I've seen talking about this, right? About kind of like the, this brand, internal brand evangelist. Mm-hmm. And the company does a great job at their employees sharing their message. They're on LinkedIn at all times. I, like I find them all the time. Yeah. Their content is, again, is amazing. All branded. The message is so consistent across whoever you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But the differentiator is that it, they don't sound like robots of like this was crafted, yes. you know, as a marketing gimmick. Like it does sound like they are actually enjoying it so much that they want to create this type of content, yet the message is so clear and the mission, you know, everybody's so aligned that that's why it's consistency across the board. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, that is so cool. I wonder why not so many businesses do something like that. And, I, and I'm curious why, right? Is it just a lack of knowledge on internal marketing? Is it lack of resources? Is it maybe something that is way too new for for most companies? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. I think the first big reason is that I think a lot of companies underestimate or, or not are not clear about why employees are working with them in the first place, right? So there's re- you respect a mindset that says, hey, you know, they work here, we pay them. Uh, so they should be engaged because it's their salary that allows them to pay their bills. But the reality is it's for that reason why you would need to engage them. Because as far as I'm concerned, and I've always believed this, employees don't work for a company, they work for themselves. The, so mm. they're working with you as a means to an end to pay bills, to achieve their financial goals. But ultimately, because they're working for themselves, you need to communicate what's the benefit of being a part of this team beyond just collecting a paycheck, right? Mm. So it starts there. It's the mindset of the company recognizing that employees, yes, they work there, but they're really working for themselves. How can you yeah. onboard them in the brand mm. mission and vision in the same way a customer doesn't have to buy from you they could buy from someone else and you have to convince them to do that what do you have to do to engage and convince your employees to buy into the brand mission and your why and i think that's that's really the big reason as to why they don't really empower employees to have their own brands externally that's a whole other conversation perhaps i think a lot of companies are concerned about the risk that's involved in that and then their ways to mitigate that but i would say those are the big reasons why i don't think more companies Mm. are tuned in this is awesome i I, I was just listening to a show with uh, a creator. His name is Doug Demura, right? He just sold part of his company for $37 million. He's a one-man shop creating, and then he built the business with a partner on the car auction side, Mm -hmm. right? And he was talking about the process when they went, uh, this company, this VC firm that invests in creators, how big of a risk is for them to do this, in part because uh, anything that Doug says, right, that's, that will affect their investment, right? On the on the other side. So uh, along the lines of what you said, like, hey, if people are building their personal brands, right? They have their own thoughts, their own process, like their own beliefs, right? That they're probably gonna put out there. So maybe that's a way to mitigate that. But at the same time, I feel like the counterpart to that is if you have an employee doing that, perfect. That's a perfect filter to know exactly who you're dealing with, right? So either yes or no. And then if you attract the people that are sharing their message, right? Constantly. And you're like, I'm in alignment with these guys. Like the values of our companies are in alignment with them, right? If we empower, they can do more of that. They're going to be more entitled to uh, do more things with our company. And I remember when I worked for Red Bull, that was like, that was like my first like big boy job, right? In a sense. (laughs) And I adore that brand, (laughs) right? Let's not talk about the drink. You know, I'm addicted, of course, but like the brand itself to me resonated so much and the things that we're doing at the time in the marketing side, it, it was amazing. And I became this massive evangelist, even though I haven't worked with him for, for many years now, I continue to talk about this thing, right? Because we synced up at that level, right? And we were encouraged 
to go do our things. It wasn't publishing, but yes. it was, hey, go do your own events, go do this. Like, what are your ideas? What are your things? And I think even, the, uh, you know, your your team members doing that. And then if we bring that to the content production side, right? Like, because obviously we live in the content side, right? Um, you know, we have our video editor is doing their, his own reels and he's, he's encouraged. And I think yeah. we can, yes, definitely do a better job encouraging more of that. Our product manager, right? He has a YouTube channel called, called Geeking Properly, right? He just loves really? about, loves video games and loves this. And he has a really cool uh, idea and different things, right? And every single person has their own quirks and things that they like to talk about. And because they're around our company, that's all about publishing, right? Yes. They're like, they're encouraged to do that. I think we can do a more proactive job uh, maybe keeping them accountable to like what they say they're going to go publish yeah. right but uh, i think that creates an amazing and a unique dynamic that then that is starts attracting that ideal employee for you right or ideal team member for your team right so yes uh, what are some processes maybe that people can put in place right let's say the company already believes like this is a thing that they have to take care of today mm -hmm. right whether that's a small company or a bigger company what are some things that they can start doing today to be able to attract that talent and retain them and getting, you know, have them excited about the things that you're doing every single day. So the first thing I would say is you need to do a temperature check. So before you start putting in your internal marketing plans, you need to do that temperature check. How do employees actually feel about the brand? So we're looking beyond just your typical employee satisfaction surveys, which are still important. But when you talk about internal marketing or brand engagement, it's about starting with a temperature check. How do they feel about the brand? Do they know what the brand stands for? Do they feel proud to work for company X? Uh, that's where you have to start because if there's a gap there or if they are not confident mm. that they know what makes your company great you know if you say to them hey if you got a family member who wanted to buy something from your company why should they choose your product or service over the competition they need to be comfortable being able to share that or promote that so do the temperature check first uh, the next thing you want to do is assess your whole internal comms framework and mechanism you know our messages that you're sending out already going through or not uh, do that audit uh, I know you talk about internal podcasts not too long ago. We realized that e-newsletters weren't necessarily doing it for us. So we started our own internal podcast, which is enjoying nice. way better engagement than a news yeah, an yeah. e-newsletter. So there's an opportunity there. Do that audit. And then, of course, audit your culture. See what changes need to happen so that your employees feel comfortable working in this space, uh, that your leadership buy-in is there. And then, of course, create the kind of activities that get your employees engaged. So again, you're going to do those town hall meetings. You're going to have those engagement sessions. You're going to do things like your personal branding workshops for those employees like yours who want to do their own thing on YouTube or have their own podcast and they want to start building their brands online. Give them the tools and the tips that they need to be able to do that. And of course, you put the frameworks in place, right? Because I know if folks are still uncomfortable about risk where that's concerned. Uh, but things like your social yeah. media policy, which, you know, tells everybody the kind of guardrails that they need to stay within are always important. But I would say those are the key starting point steps that companies can take to get, get going with their internal marketing strategy. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. What what are some big big no nos in there? <laughs> uh, like maybe what are some big mistakes that you see people doing? You know, let's let's save them uh, a few maybe who knows years of learning <laughs> through through these mistakes. I love that question. So the the first thing is is that. Um, you don't want to make any assumptions that your employees know what they need to be doing or what they need to be saying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so providing the information, the scripting, product training, uh, anything that is required to give employees the information that they need. Never assume that they know everything that they need to know. Uh, yeah. Never assume that where social media is concerned that they're clear about what they should and should not be sharing about the company externally. You want to be able to do that as well. Uh, don't do this without leadership buy-in from the CEO or head of business right down. They need to be bought into just how important employees are in building the yeah. brand and driving growth and making sure that you put those measures in place. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure that the measures that you have in place are there to prove the value that it's bringing and setting up those KPIs up front is always something I recommend too. 
That's awesome. Uh, th- thank you, by the way. Like, mm-hmm. full on roadmap, by the way. Like, go back and listen to this. Take your notes because we have, like, your five steps, six steps that you can go share now with, you know, your company CEO and, and brainstorm around this and put an action plan to this. And then the big no-nos, the things that you need to avoid, which is great. So, okay, this this was great. What we call Golden Boulder. Boom. <laughs> okay. Um, and, I, and I want to share a story. Like, uh, just this week, right, we're having a conversation with this – this amazing person that wants to start a, a podcast came from came from a client, right? And it's like, hey guys, like this person really wants to put his message out there, and uh, he's such an evangelist of the company that referred uh, wow. him to us, right? And he's like, I want to brand the podcast with the name of the company, and I want to talk about the concepts and the things, and and I'm like. I was so confused, right? I was like, is this part of like, is it your personal brand? Mm. Are you like, were you hired? And I, we don't know that. Like what, what's happening here? So we are brainstorming ideas and different things. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a partner show of that company. Yes. But when we were bringing this back to the company that referred to be like, guys, like this is a great indicator that this is like an MVP and he loves and adores what you guys are saying, your message, like he yeah. implements it in his own business. Like, this can be an incredible tool for you guys to build that relationship and see where it goes, right? And they, they sell bigger packages and different things. So this could become a, an amazing sales enablement tool for, for him, not only to, yeah. to build his personal brand, but also to help, you know, each other out. And I was like, wow, what a great way to find these out, right? When you mm-hmm. have those people coming to you every single time, like giving you uh, feedback or excited about the things that you're putting out, maybe there are people that are outside and the CEO of this company made a comment that was amazing, right? It's like, we've been looking for a couple of months now uh, to fill this very specific, a specific position. Maybe this is the person yeah. that if it, it, the, if it fits the description, maybe that's the person. And we've been like, we haven't been looking at it because we've been so focused on the other process. And he just keeps like coming and coming and coming and coming. Mm-hmm. And the podcast was like a, an afterthought because we're like, we don't know what to do with you. Maybe you guys should do that, right? And it's like, <laughs> well, there's a way that both can work together. And I think it's such an incredible case where, you know, now if we open our eyes, who are those people that continue yeah. to comment on your things, like right? that continue to reach out, that continue to uh, listen to your message? They might be great talent for Absolutely. you to have in your company and continue to explore that situation. So I love it. I think like possibly this, this was me before this conversation, Carrie. Massive blur around this thing. And like, <laughs> everything just like opened up. Oh, yeah, the that, sound came out. <laughs> definitely a lot of clarity. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious on what are maybe some creative ways you've seen companies take on internal marketing, right? Because I know we've talked a lot about obviously, you know, the, the podcast side of things, but I'm sure there are many other ways, right? Like what are some of the most creative you've seen that you're like, wow, that is very clever. Wow. So there are a few things. I mean, there's one thing that kind of jumped to mind for me when you asked the question is there is there's this uh, small, well, I wouldn't even call them small anymore. They're more like a regional bank who they had they had something, I forget the name of it, but I'll just describe how the program goes where they ask employees to do community service activities for maybe like you could say 40 hours for the year. Wow. Right. And what they say is, look, we'll give you 40 hours worth of time off and it's paid. We're not going to dock anything. You guys can go out and be a part yeah. of your community engagement activities. So whether it be volunteering uh, with the boys and girls clubs or just doing you know, stuff for elderly and shut in neighbors. And what that does is it's so aligned with the brand and why the brand exists, because it's a real community bank that's really passionate about being mm. part of the community. Mm. When you say to your team members, look, we want to empower you not just to be a part of our community as a bank, but we want to partner with you to be a, be an intricate part of your community and giving back to your community. And what you're doing is you're really finding people who are bought into the same vision that the bank is, but you're also giving them the power to be able to go out and do that for their communities as well. And it builds yeah. that kind of wow. connection with the brand that's so powerful when you see a company that's saying, hey, we trust you, take this time, do what you need to do. And um, it's been great too. So to me, that's probably the most inspirational story that I've heard from a bank who does uh, internal marketing, quite frankly, very well. That is really, really good. That kind of reminded me, I don't know if it's related at all, but it it just reminded me of 
my first year that I got here to the States, 2011, I was playing soccer at a school in Midwestern, in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. And part of the program is we actually had to be mentors for these kids at a school. So for X amount of hours, every single season, we had to go out there and, you know, spend time with our mentee. And it was such an incredible experience, mm. right? It, it was, I was literally brand new, so my English wasn't, you know, like we say, very good looking. And mm, still I, not very I, good I was looking. struggling a little bit, right? <laughs> I was struggling a little bit to communicate with yeah. my mentee, but the experience was like, wow, this is so cool. The fact that the coach is making us, you know, connect with the community. Mm -hmm. And I totally related that to to the school, the value that the school was providing to my in my life mm -hmm. to become a mentor and help somebody else. Right. And then hopefully change that that person's life for the better, too. So I, I related these two things and it's pretty cool. Kind of like an internal marketing for the soccer team back there. And I just yeah. didn't know it. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Just this morning, I was in a conversation with one of our partners and uh, in the in the business, not not in the love life. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> just want to clarify that because Fonzie was like, you know, whatever. Anyways, uh, uh, that's so funny. Don't uh, worry, Katie, Katie still doesn't listen. <laughs> yeah, so it's she, okay. she doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> Anyways, and uh, and he was talking about how he's having employee issues. Uh, you know, he had to fire somebody, and then somebody else quit, and then he's like diving deep into the operations. And it's all broken, right? So he was like mm -hmm. re going like really, really stressed. And we're talking about um, how he believes that part of it is remote work and that he doesn't see them in the office and there's not an environment where we can see them. So today, more than any, any, anything, right? Like where these companies are transitioning to whether, you know, fractional remote or full remote, this is more important today than yes. ever, right? Because I'm like, wow, your your culture line is broken yeah. when there's not a place of gathering where you can build that, you know, whether with with your coworkers, with your supervisors, your man, whatever, like your team, right? That's uh, that to me, like I work in the fitness industry for, for years and I remember like the, the, the chemistry that the team had was incredible because we were there in the action working, doing our things, right? And, and we just built an incredible team off of the relationships and the things that we were doing on location. And now our, our company is completely remote, right? We have people in multiple countries yeah. and we're like, well, we have these happy hours that we do, you know, maybe once a month and, uh, and we talk every single day, but I really miss like the in-person environment. So yeah. these companies now that are thinking, right, maybe that's a cheaper route because we're, we're saving on rent on the buildings or whatnot. Like now is the time to reallocate maybe some of that budget into internal marketing yeah. uh, strategies and things that we can do to to build that up, right? Yeah. So have you noticed, like, especially with, you know, people and companies going remote, like, what are maybe some of those initiatives, right, like that people can do, especially if they have remote teams? Can, can I add something to that question too sure. real quick? Um, as he was talking about this, my, my mind went to like, well, what if, you know, I know a lot of these people, they don't want to come back to the office because they now have – a lot of freedom and they don't feel like they're being, you know, kind of like, uh, just man, like micromanage. Right. Yeah. But, and I, and I'm a believer that a strong culture is going to attract better talent as Absolutely. well. Right. That's one of the purpose of, you know, internal marketing, but then is it possible to turn these people as well into evangelists of your brand? Mm. If they are not, or if they're not already bought in, to the brand, right? And maybe right. how do you spot that? How do you spot that? What and what can you do about it? Wow. So yeah. So it's it, I'm picking up kind of like two different angles here, but ju just to jump to Luis's question. So you're right. You know, in a remote environment, it's super difficult. You don't have that water cooler experience anymore, uh, where you get yeah. to see when someone um, has changed uh, their 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 glasses, or if you know, or they've they've, they've bought a new outfit. I mean, it, it it loses that value. So what I've found is that in a remote environment, we really just have to be very deliberate about making making the decisions that need to be made to make sure that the culture and the camaraderie that we enjoy as a team is maintained. Uh, yeah. However, creatively and whether folks, I'm sorry, maybe like it or not, or sometimes you just need to be clear about the why. So I tell people my team meetings, I meet with my team once a week for an hour. And for me, it's cameras on. And while that's not popular, I say cameras on, but guys, guess what? If you want to 
turn on the camera in your pajamas or in with with you know a satin bonnet on your head i don't care yeah. i just really want to see your face because that's how i get to see if something is wrong you know or if you change your glasses oh you got a new pair of glasses we get to celebrate that yeah. and again yeah. we don't it's not about dressing up or looking good it's just about being able to see each other to smile to laugh and Sometimes I'll pick up a vibe from someone because the camera is on and I said, hey, you know, let's have a coffee afterwards. Let's meet at the coffee shop, just you and I and just shoot the breeze. So do that, you know, virtual cocktail mixology sessions are things that we've done, yes. uh, you know, games evenings on Zoom. You know, we, we do that because we believe it's important to maintain the camaraderie and then set boundaries about what do we meet in person for? There are certain events that we can make decisions that, hey, because of the type of event or because of the type of meeting or brainstorming session, it's better we do this in person. So set those parameters yeah. and allow the team to to log on to them because you realize that they recognize the benefit. Um, Fonzie, I wanted to jump to your question, which is really yeah. about identification. I think that the first thing that companies probably need to be a little bit more deliberate about is being creative, even from the recruiting uh, phase of the relationship. You know, uh, Zappos, yeah. a great brand um, in terms of how it started and the culture that they built. They would tell you that the recruiting process started with the parking attendant and the security guard in the parking lot. Everybody mm -hmm. had a role to play in the feedback back for candidates who would come for interviews, you know, because candidates wow. would come to be interviewed and they put on their best face in the interview room to HR, but they were probably sour to the parking attendant or they were rude to the security guard or the receptionist wow. when they came in. So what HR would do is they would go back to the security guard and the receptionist and they would say, what was the interaction like with that person? Were they friendly? Were they kind? Were they, were they yeah. courteous? You know, things like that. And they would give feedback. Yeah. And so that whole loop gives you a more authentic view of the person that tells mm. you is this person the right fit for us so i'd say creativity yeah, yeah. in recruiting and making sure you're pulling in the right people that's aligned with your values as a brand is super important and that's how you can do it i love yeah, it that is so good do, do you believe in uh if somebody's not maybe that invested in the brand right but they're still doing their their job do you what what would you do in that case are you going to try to turn them into a, an evangelist? What happens if they do not turn into an evangelist? And sure, they're performing at their job, but you know for a fact that those that become brand advocates, evangelists, like they perform better. Like, what would you do about that? Yeah, great question. I would say not everyone is meant to be an evangelist publicly. You know, let's just keep it yeah. real. Not everybody's comfortable being on camera like this or on a podcast like this. Not everybody wants to write a blog. Hey, let's just let's just keep it real. Uh, so not everybody can be an evangelist, but everyone, I believe, can stand for what the brand represents and even yeah. if it's that that's just internally that's okay too you know i've had instances even in my own company i talk about it all the time where there are some people who are probably more in the background of things but based on just how they interact with their colleagues they still represent the values that we stand yeah. for, whether it be that be, you know, respect, integrity, transparency, how they interact with the team. Because again, the culture is so very, very important. So you really yeah. don't want people who are infecting the culture or creating a toxicity in the culture that you're trying to build. So even if they're yeah. not going to be your evangelist externally, that's okay. As mm -hmm. long as how they walk the walk internally and how they contribute to the culture we're trying to build and maintain that's oh, that's what's important at the bottom of the at the end of the day yeah, yeah. i like it i it, i relay that to pretty much get rid of the toxic people inside of your life right that they're not mm -hmm. serving i think i think it's the same probably with the company right like they can be great and like you said they don't necessarily need to be these brand advocates but if they're just being even though they're performing, yeah. if you're being toxic for the culture, yeah. maybe the best thing to do is part ways. Yeah, yeah, it, it is what it is. And I know that that could be a controversial point, but you, you have to be so, you know, again, because when you talk about the four piece of marketing, right, the basic piece, place, price, product, promotion, the product mm -hmm. in internal marketing is your culture. 
right? Whereas for external marketing, it's a product or service that you sell. You know, when the service is broken, we fix it for the customer. When the product is broken, we fix it. But our culture is our product for employees who are to be our ambassadors of the brand and Mm. they're to deliver on the promise. Mm. And we're not fixing that. That's a problem. Fix that product. And it makes your internal marketing that much easier. Yeah. And I, and I know some people might be thinking because I've, I've been in that position where, you know, we have, we have the business is running, the business is doing good, but that culture might be toxic yeah. because maybe one or two people. And I remember in the fitness studio manager days, we had, uh, we had a couple of people in, in our teams that that conversation dragged for months. And the mm-hmm. fear was, well, the studio is running full capacity, right? We had about a thousand members that were coming every single day. It was packed, right? We're like, we don't have somebody that will cover that for maybe two, three months while we find that new person, right? So the the action steps with ownership at that point, and even in internal teams, right? Like if you have on, now on content, right? Your editor, your producer, like whoever that is, right? There are indicators that as soon as you start thinking, you're like, wow, like this might be a little bit of a red flag. Um, I would encourage to at least explore that conversation and start taking uh, little steps to be like, let's do this because yeah. I promise you the pain of going out and be like making that decision and maybe ending that relationship and then bringing somebody else new is so much smaller compared to the other pain that could happen yeah. on the back end. And I remember like a company that we used to, that we used to hire at the beginning of our journey, like three or four months ago. I remember there was a leak of information. This employee apparently like broke and it, it was a bad relationship and he emailed every single uh, <laughs> customer of this other company. Oh, be like, I offer the same wow. services. Uh, and so we're like, wow, like how bad that, that was mm-hmm, for yeah. this employee and this company to come to, to that point. So I promise you, like if you're in that, in that position, I, I encourage you and, you know, Gary's going like this right now. <laughs> so yeah. just have that conversation and start looking for, for maybe a different solution. I promise you. But this has been such a, a cool conversation. Thank oh, yeah. you so much for bringing this topic for the first time exclusive uh, into content is, is profit. And uh, we like to obviously, you know, you have your own journey on your podcasting side of things. Like we're going to leave all the links right below. Uh, but what will be, uh, where will you be if you never published? Wow. Where would I be? I would probably just be doing my regular nine to five um, wife and mom duties after hours. Uh, You know, just just publishing and having my own podcast has really just been awesome. It's a great networking opportunity. I get the chance to meet and engage with wonderful folks like yourself. I've learned so much. Uh, I've built skill sets, how to produce and host a podcast. Hey, you know, um, it's just been a wonderful journey as you know and uh so grateful for it and i'm glad that i i took that journey and took that step uh, awesome. so awesome yeah and I, and I hope this encourages a lot of people to you know put the voice out there like yeah. if you are feeling that age and you're in that company go to your go to your boss go to your manager go to your ceo be like hey can we do this together and i think they're gonna look at if they're if they're in tune with you as well right because that's important uh they're probably gonna see that with good eyes and you guys are gonna be able to collaborate and do something together which i think is awesome yeah absolutely anything um, else wants? Yeah, I'm curious. Is there any resource that you may have for those who are listening that they want to learn more about internal marketing, right? Uh, that they can go and put their hands on, right? Of course, the podcast. So what is the podcast? Where can they find it? But also, do you have maybe like a guide, right? That they can also uh, leverage? Great question. So, you know, to be very honest with you, I myself, I'm still hunting for internal marketing resources because again, while it's existed for a couple of decades now, it still has not been something that's been deeply explored. Yeah. So in addition to my podcast, what I've been actually doing is I'm going on to Amazon and shopping for books that say internal yes. marketing. Admittedly, most of those books are more text books uh, for college level courses. Uh, so uh, it's it's not the easiest of reads if you're not reading like that. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you know, it's wow. not yeah. like a business. But I would say just Google internal marketing. Um, any book you see that speaks about it, there are probably five of them at most. Uh, but yeah. invest in them and have a read because internal marketing is not just about employee brand advocacy. It can impact things like production and profitability and, and, and things like that. So just read as widely as you can and just join the conversation because I think the more people have that conversation then the more we'll see more content coming out about it for sure 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember fresh out of college, uh, I was like, you know, finding, trying to find jobs and things. And, you know, we've always thought ourselves that we're a little bit different in many ways. And I think this is why we, you know, we run our own thing and we do, you know, we, we carve our path in a sense. Yeah. But it was like, where do I go? And I was so confused, right? Because all my friends were going to the financial industry. I went to say in, in, in town, there's a lot of financial logistics. And I was like, that's not where I want to go at all. And I remember I found this company in Chicago called Red Frog Events. Not sure if they're up uh, still, but they, I was like obsessed with uh, obstacle racing, like top motors, Spartan races. Uh, and I don't know if, you've, if you're familiar with them, Kay, but they're like this like 20K, 10K, like mud runs. You do obstacles and different things. Okay. And so this company will put up those events and they'll produce them. And I remember their biggest like, magnet was their office and it was like a playroom they have all these things right and and they'll advertise their office and then right after that their culture and like all their mission the, the vision and values of them they have employees doing their, their own events and doing all these things i'm like oh my gosh this is so amazing yeah. and then my, my life took a different turn and i stayed where i'm at and i'm very grateful for it. but i remember i'm like wow that's such a, a massive magnet when you're loud as a company uh, mm -hmm. with your internal marketing, mm -hmm. that the benefits can be massive. So Absolutely. Um, I'm going to break your heart, but it seems like Red Frog, Red, Red Frog Events is closed. Yeah, I think it's, oh. a, it's an industry type of type of thing. But yeah, because uh, we just yeah. the pandemic would have hit so many folks in that industry. So maybe who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Spartan is like the sole owner of that industry at the moment. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, I remember that experience. I was like, wow, that's incredible. The amount of talent that they might be getting just mm -hmm. for that. And then they had yeah. the opportunity to, you know, pick and choose the best. So, yeah. Okay. Cause that's the thing what with internal to... marketing. I'm so sorry that employer brand, oh, you, you know, yeah. employer branding is, is one of the best benefits because when you got happy, engaged employees who are bought into the brand and they're able to talk about yes. that externally, they're attracting great people, you know? So mm. it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So cool. Such a refreshing conversation. I have so yeah. many ideas. I'm like, I need to sit down, <laughs> write down my thoughts. And then share them with the team. Because there's so many things now I'm looking back. I'm like, okay, we could have done this better. Uh, we said we we're going to do this. Maybe we haven't followed through with that. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I see the opportunity, the value yes. of just, again, increasing the involvement and advocacy of, of the, the team that, that works with us. So yes. I'm very excited. Very awesome. excited to dive into this. Maybe we can add it on our uh, L10 meeting board and, and sure. talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Here's there anything else you want to share? Wow. Well, I'd really just encourage folks to to join the tribe, join the internal marketing conversation. You know, so my podcast, the internal marketing podcast is anywhere podcasts are found. So just Google the internal marketing podcast It's going to come up. Uh, so join the conversation, be a part of it. I'm also on LinkedIn and I love yeah. to engage with people there. And there are a few folks who are part of that conversation on LinkedIn as well. So yeah, just join the conversation, share ideas mm -hmm. and Let's get more businesses bought into this. Let's I'd say that. Yes. Yeah. That's I like awesome. it. I like it. You got two new recruits Yay. to push the word and and, and share with the world. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Uh Fonzie, anything else? We just thank you, Carrie. It was absolutely amazing. Super refreshing. Love your energy too. Thank and you. And the Caribbean Queen delivered one hundred percent. I'm and, updating my resume, right? That's why I jump <laughs> pop off here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yeah, and I'm excited to, you know, hopefully meet one day in person and yeah. you know, talk a little bit more about internal marketing. That would be yes. awesome. Sweet. Guys, with that said, thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at This Bros Co. That is Randy Carey here. Help you move one step closer towards your goal. Please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. <laughs> no, every time I say and, and, I just think about the, the other the, beginning. Sure. Yeah. yeah, okay. Right. Bye, guys. <laughs>